everyone, and we are here at the Swiss Innovation Day in Zurich, in Switzerland. And with me is Fabian Bartnik. Hi, Hi, Fabian. Thank Hi, you for taking the time. Yeah. Fabian has founded Infinito Tech. Uh, many of you probably know him already, and I'm glad we're going to have a chat now. So I have one question for you, Fabian, and eager to hear what you have to say. If you put yourself in the shoes of a hotelier, looking mid-term, long-term commercial strategy, um, what would be the three priorities you would focus on? And what are the key messages you would try to transport to your teams? Okay. Uh, I think as a first point, um, it's going to be a rocky road in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, it's a bit like when you, when you have your own startup and you go from really good day to really bad days. So that's something that we can expect over the next 12 to 18 months where you will have good news from some parts of the world saying recovery is blooming, things, things are progressing, cases are coming down. Um, but then you will hear other parts of the world where you hear the steam is running out, things are going to slow down a little bit. So one, one of the phrases that I always say to hotels is um, it takes two hands to clap but more to make music. Um, and what that really means is while you want to play with certain customer segments, they might not be allowed to play with you at that point in time. That doesn't mean they can't play with you in 6, 12 months time. But if you're fortunate enough to have a domestic market, and domestic is something where you can say drive-in, uh, regional fly-in, right. before international, you're actually on the better end of the stick than the ones who are purely, purely um, internationally driven. So. I think just mentally be prepared that it's not all sunshine over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, with that, you got to be agile and you got to be experimental. Uh, experimental for the reason is whatever works right now might not work in six weeks' time. So it's perfectly okay for you to change your mind because there's so many elements out there that you need to take into consideration, you, you're bound to get it right, you're bound to get it wrong. But it's not like, a, oh, I tried and tested, it's not working, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to move away from it. It brings us to this, this monkey see, monkey do kind of scenario. Uh, systems especially can only take data that they can see and then they do something with that. So you're doing the same thing. You take in data and you say, okay, based on the current state information that I have, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And that works. But in three weeks' time, maybe the letter of choice are A, B, C. So your X, Y, Z is out of the window, A, B, C is in. And that is key to keep that mindset of agile, pivoting, experimental. Anything goes. So um, there's a saying that if you can't win, change the rules. If you can't change the rules, ignore them. Right? Uh, we don't even know who's playing the game anymore. Right. In 2021, 2022. Very true, yeah. Right? So anything goes as far as my book is concerned, or when, when we talk to hotels, it's always about try it out. If it works, happy days, do more. If it doesn't, try again. But keep on trying, keep yes. on trying. Um, and I think the last piece is, is the force will be strong. Okay, right? what do you mean by that? We had 9-11. Right. We had the economic crisis. Right. Uh, we had SARS. Right. We now had COVID. At every single point afterwards, we said, hotel will never be the same. It's going to be dead. It's going to be different. We're all going to be at home. Nobody will interact with us. And guess what? people are still going back to each other. Travel will always be one of our prime things. Why? Because we don't like change. But boy, do we like to escape. Right. Right? People will always want to escape. And the best thing, until way down the line with immersive technology, we're going to be see recovery coming in. But it's not a switch on happy days. It's going to be a slowly but surely move up and there will be some struggles along the way. I have a last question because you just mentioned the technology and immersive technology coming up. Uh, many hoteliers facing introducing technology to their teams, a huge challenge to make their teams approach and embrace technology naturally and proactively. Yep. 
What would you do as an hotelier to change that or make this in the best way possible to take the fear from your teams from, for technology and show them the real advantage and opportunities okay. from it around you? Uh, two parts. Number one is it's not going to be easy because you're asking people to change. Mm -hmm. right? And if we look at physics, yes. once something is in motion, it stays in motion. Right? So people like to stay in motion. Change has always an ambiguity. I think we're putting too much emphasis on the, on the change, mm -hmm. right? But whatever you're introducing needs to add value. It needs to fundamentally address the core issue you're trying to solve, right? So if you have an issue in, in point A, forget all the fluffy stuff around, oh, I'm also here, I'm also gonna do B, C, D. Irrelevant, you wanna solve A. So it's a purpose-driven throwing in versus let's jump on the tech wagon kind of right. thing. Uh, the second thing is about getting people to do it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when I started taking over 50 hotels uh, in one of my previous roles, right. uh, there were two ways of how I could have gotten by it. Mm -hmm. One is uh, call everybody, tell them about the change that I'm going to make, do the change and then hope to God it's really working. Or I just do the change really listen or not listen to their complaints for about a week and guess what everything was fine right sometimes you just gotta put it in let them complain until they realize they don't have a choice this is a new thing take it and people will adapt only when they know they have a wiggle room and are allowed to do something else will they fall back to their old stuff Right? So it's again, going back to parenting, it's a bit of tough love in parenting mm. to say, no, that's the way it is going to go right now. So you just got just to gotta go with it. In ideal cases, the technology that you bring in will or provide, provide the value and be so, I don't know what the opposite of intrusive is, mm -hmm. but so less intrusive that you don't even know that the technology is there helping you get on better with your life. But... When you do, do me a favor and take human-centric technology. There was too long man versus machine. We, we don't want to go down the Terminator T-1000 no. route. We want people to be uplifted. Right. A technology doesn't care if you switch it off. Right? A human does. A human wants to have a better life for themselves and their families. So technology should drive that human and nudge them to do just that, regardless if it's automation, better business results, or just higher life quality for somebody. Mm -hmm. Technology needs to serve a purpose to uplift the human so the human can actually do more than just being uh, a working horse. Very good. Thank you very much, Fabian. You're very welcome. So nice to have you here. Thank and you. Yes. Have a great reminder of the country. I will. Thank, Thank you. you.